A spectator subscription is now better value than ever before. As a new subscriber joining today, you'll pay just £1 a week for unlimited online and app access in your first year. To subscribe, go to spectator.co.uk forward slash TV offer. John, thanks so much for joining us on Spectator TV. Now, all the polling of the Tory leadership race seem to show that Liz Truss is way ahead of Rishi Sunak, but there does seem to be a lot of variation. Uh, on Tuesday, YouGov had Liz Truss at 69% uh, and Rishi Sunak at 31%. Meanwhile, an Italian firm had the pair within 5% of each other. Why is there so much discrepancy between the polls? <laughs> well, we'd like to know to the answer to that question, Cindy. Um, <laughs> The two organisations did their polling somewhat differently. YouGov, of course, have this quite substantial panel of people who are willing to answer their polls. Almost in every one of the difficulties with running such a panel is that you're more likely to get people who are interested in politics to participate in them than those who are not. One of the things that YouGov, amongst others, have been trying quite hard to correct in recent years um, because that can be a disadvantage when it comes to a general election. If you've got uh, people who are more likely to turn out and vote, then you may underestimate some of the differences in turnout. And that was certainly part of the story behind the problems that the polls had back in uh, 2015. But the upside, of course, is that it does mean that you are much more likely to have members of political parties in your panel because they are by definition interested in politics. Mm. So that's the way you go doing things. That's also the way that opinion uh, tend to do things as well. Techni, who are the company that came up with something different. Now, first of all, they're relatively new to polling in the UK, although they're well established in Italy, which is their base. Mm. What they did to get their numbers from what one can tell is, I mean, it was basically part of a much bigger polling operation in which they were sending out emails at random to a database of uh, people whose email addresses they have and also uh, tele bringing telephone numbers at random to a database of telephone numbers they have. So this is less in the way of pre-selected people. Um, mm -hmm. Part of, you know, just polling the general public, but in the course of that, picked up 800 people who said they were Conservative members. So it's a different methodology. The two companies have produced not dissimilar results of their estimates of vote intentions of the public in general over recent months, where they clearly diverged in this case. I think all that one can say is that, you know, Techni is a new company and maybe they're right or maybe they're wrong. YouGov's record of um, leadership polls is a pretty good one. They were virtually spot on in their estimates of the proportion of Labour Party members that were going to vote for Jeremy Corbyn in 2015 and 2016. They were pretty much spot on in the battle between Cameron and uh, David Davis in 2005, though they were a little bit high on uh, Boris Johnson's score in the 2019 contest. Equally, Opinion, uh, who are the other company who've done this in the past, and they're promising us another poll next week. They've got a pretty good record indeed. They've got the Boris Johnson versus Jeremy Hunt contest almost down to a, a single point. So it's a difficult thing to do. We are trying to get hold of a very specialist section of the population. They represent less than 1% of the population. But one has to say, given their record in the past, one certainly cannot ignore what comes out from the companies that um, have uh, been doing this on a regular basis. And I guess the worrying thing for the Sunak camp is that it's not just that the you know YouGov are showing this trust well ahead, um, as indeed our Conservative home with their, their, uh, their uh, survey of their of their members, um, but also that apparently the story has been the the movement has been away from which is up towards uh, towards this trust. And the truth is actually, even if you looked at the Techni poll, you looked at some of the innards, and again you could see some of Rishi Sunak problems. So. There were hardly any issues in which Techni had uh, Rishi Sunak well ahead. There were one or two about uh, like civil rights, LGBT rights, um, a little bit on, on the economy. But uh, whereas there were a number of issues like immigration and others where Liz Truss was well ahead. And actually, one could say, well, first of all, let's remember even that poll had Liz Truss ahead. But secondly, actually, the overall numbers of 48 to 43 for Truss 
seemed rather surprisingly narrow given some of the other figures that were, that were there in that poll. And John, we know we think of polls as these things that measure voting intent, but with the polls coming out during uh, the race, uh, it surely has an influence on how the race is panning out as well. For example, the polls that we've just been talking about, they lend this air of inevitability towards Liz Truss's victory, and presumably that influences whether it's other MPs or other voters into backing the winning course. Well, we're talking about voters in general. Um, I mean, the research that's been done on this will tell you that for every occasion that you can pick up a so-called bandwagon effect of people piling in behind the party that's ahead, you can find another one where there's an underdog effect where people seem to pile in the opposite direction. <laughs> right. Because we're not talking here about um, a polling of the general public. We're talking about uh, a, a small audience and where the outcome is going to affect people's careers inside the Conservative Party. And I suppose what is notable is that even though Liz Truss in the end only just scraped onto the ballot, mm -hmm. um, if she does win this contest, I think you know she's going to be as low as anybody has been in terms of the share of the uh, supportive MPs at the final stage of the MPs process. Uh, but despite that, all of the announcements we have got since from senior MPs, including those who either took part, who had hoped to take part in the leadership ballot, have all been coming out in favour of this trust. Now, not for me to impugn the motives of those who've done this. Doubtless they are telling us what they, in their judgment, is indeed the best thing for their party and indeed for the country. But... Shall we say, if you were uh, wanting to uh, uh, keep your open your chances of being in Liz Truss's new cabinet, then such statements perhaps may not be regarded as unhelpful towards your uh, your career progression. And to that extent, at least, clearly, um, it can make a difference to uh, the way in which MPs react. And I think it's also true that you know some of Rishi Sunak's tactics have been affected by the polling. The, the, Mm -hmm. uh, way in which he tried quite clearly to try to see if he could steamroller, put this trust on the back foot in the BBC debate, something which in the end for some people came across as rather too aggressive and mansplaining. Mm -hmm. I think you know, that almost undoubtedly was saying, I've got what I've got to try to do here is to persuade people that I am actually more effective as Prime Minister, more competent, which indeed is one of the attributes, one of the most few attributes on which even in the current polling, which is soon at does score uh, relatively well. So again, tactics of the candidates can be mapped. It does, of course, perhaps raise the question, given that this trust is apparently so far ahead, as to why she has carried on making so many uh, policy announcements, mm. uh, uh, um, with therefore the risk that you make one that leads you into trouble, which clearly happened to her this week with the announcement about regional pay boards. Once you're ahead, just stick to your message. The narrative is working. The narrative that I am the empathetic, ordinary girl who grew up in Paisley and Leeds and went to comprehensive school, and I'm opposing this posh boy from Winchester. It's a narrative which we can question, but it's a Johnsonian-style narrative in terms of its effectiveness with the Tory membership, together with, of course, addressing the angst inside the Conservative Party about the fact that it's found itself presiding over high levels of spending and high levels of taxation is projected to do so uh, into the near future. Um, it's, she's, she's addressing that angst. She has found a pitch of way of selling herself uh, to certainly the right of her party. Um, and, uh, you know, therefore, in the end, therefore, um, you know, why does she need to make more policy announcements? She doesn't need to make more policy announcements. She just needs to keep on sticking to her current tune because that current tune is one so far that Rishi Sunak has not been able to significantly uh, counteract. Fascinating. Professor John Curtis, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.